Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the words spoken tonight. We'll be in season. And Lord, that it will bring forth a harvest and an awakening within us. Let us realize that you've given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Let us know, Lord, that you are a God that provides. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, tonight's teaching is, is continuation with the prophecy that God has given us. Seeing God. Amen. In your life. With 2020. Now, I know that many of you, you, you come here and those who watch mostly, those who come... You think that where am I ever going to do anything or am I ever going to be satisfied? And I would say this when you see Jesus, you'll be completely satisfied. Because when you see Jesus, you're going to understand it. That he was in everything to keep you moving. Because you know why? He's a good shepherd. A shepherd never keep the sheep in the same place. You know why you got to keep the sheep moving? Because they got to find green pasture. And fresh water. But also, you got to get them, keep them away from the enemy. The enemy knows where you've been. He smelled good lamb chops. Amen. He heard your voice giving praise in the morning. Yes. And some of you just stay still in your life. You get saved and don't move no further. But I'm talking about the God that provides. Part two of B. God Seeing God as your provider. Now tonight I'm getting ready to show you something because I'm getting ready. To, I wish you listened to me 25 years ago. I wish that many of you would take detours in life. I wish that many of you wouldn't have gave a thought for your life. Are you listening to me tonight? Jesus said this, whosoever keeps his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life will gain life. Amen? Amen. I want you to understand something. That many of you are in the situation you're in tonight. In your life. Because you didn't see God as your provider. Amen. Amen. You ain't with me yet. Yes. Amen. Many of you are given. But you're not harvesting. Everybody say harvesting. Harvesting. That's a big word you heard me talk about the last three years. Harvesting. You're still struggling. You're still in the same place. Not just struggling, but you become satisfied with where you are. Now here's the key. God cannot lie. And you didn't see him as your provider. Amen. You're not by yourself. I mean, I'm talking to you tonight. You, your witness and the way you live, some of you, I mean, you walk around. I asked somebody one day, what you doing a gas can in your car? And hear what they said. Just in case. I looked at them. You, you know, you, 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 that's how you live? You're living to run out? You're living to, on the edge of always, your last? Y'all ain't with me tonight. Amen. The God that I'm talking about, that will provide, he has provided, but you didn't understand how to harvest. So your life, you ain't with me yet, has been reduced 
to a widow's mind. This is you. It ain't worth anything. If I dropped it on the ground, nobody would pick it up. Amen. But that's all I got now. From all that God has provided for all the years I've been saved, this is it. I'm down to a little meal and all, and I'm going to eat and worry about how I'm going to make it. Year after year after year after year, decade after decade, it become a normal because that's how mama did it, that's how my family did it. We come up on welfare, we come up on don't give a care, and now, and, and we, I'm just, you know what? I made it another year. No, you didn't. You, you just made it a minute in the year. You don't have enough to make it in a year. But the God I'm talking about, the, can you see him as your provider? If you could have saw him as your provider, you will understand that you'll never be without. Amen. I'm not talking about you just can't take what God what God provides to you and just do anything with it. Amen. You know what Dr. Martin Luther King gave me? Something that's been shaking in my body. He gave me the name of a person in hell. Dang guys. I never, never, ever, ever heard that before, and I went and searched for it. And it comes in the ball gate, the Latin Bible. It's called a Ballad of Diabetes and Lazarus. You can always be learning. But one thing it showed me. That Jesus gave us this story to let you know people go to hell. Amen. Somebody has a name in hell. Yes. You don't understand that I'm talking to you, and I'm going to share something while I'm doing my counseling with God. The Lord, Holy Spirit, gave me some powerful stuff. One of the biggest lies that Satan ever t tell you. You ready for this? Is that God is with you when you are not with God. You won't change. Your behavior stay the same. You won't progress. You will continually in your same old mess. But you feel fine because God is with me. I went to church and had a song. I played. I shouted. I played. I done this. I, I read. I, I listened to a, a person radio. I done it. But nothing changes. He offered this lie to Satan, to Jesus. He said, God's with you. Is this what he said? Y'all remember? He said, you just throw yourself down. Huh? Because God is with you. You can just throw yourself down and angels will pick you up unless you dash your head. What did Jesus say? Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What about it when you... If you see God as your provider, you don't go out and tempt him Amen. with putting yourself in death. Amen. Living outside your means. Saying God is with us. When your life has been reduced to a widow's mind. But you're still faithfully doing the thing. See, some people are rich. They give out of their riches and they say, that, that's big, that's enough. They feel good about it. 
Jesus sat there in the treasury. He said, you out of your riches have given what was easy. You ain't suffering anything. But this little woman, you know what she gave? Her life. I'm a teacher of life. I gave Christ my life. I'm talking about I see God as my provider. Now turn with me to, to Luke, real quick, Luke chapter 16. Because I want to show you something. And he said in chapter, verse 19, he said, now there was a certain rich man, we know his name is Dias, and he habitually dressed in purple. Now, I see, and I'm not complaining. But some of y'all have taken God's provision to dress yourself up. You know what that, that does? It makes people look at you and make you think that God is with you. That you're blessed. Y'all ain't with me yet. Amen. But did you confirm with the one who provided what to do with what he gave? I'm not, I'm not, listen to me. I'm not talking about just always giving to the church. You should do that. I'm going to see about that, what God required and what you should do, baby. But I'm talking about for your life. See, I'm planning. I don't Look at where I'm at today. I'm planning 10 years down the road where my life going to be. Because God provides. And that's what a harvest does. Amen. A harvest is a for your today. Yes. Amen. But, so, but that's why you jump into 2020. I made it. Not, no, you ain't made it. You just made it a day. You ain't got no plan. You don't, you don't have a harvest because you done misused it. You done abused You done used it up. You done ate it up. You done tuck it over here. You done bought some nice clothes and purple and shoes and all the cars and everything you... Oh, wow, you rich. Can you see yourself at 70? 75, 80. Can you see it's 755? I wonder why people can't, they, they seem to not progress in prosperity is because they never saw God as their provider. Here's how they see it. My check. My job. My tiny bank account. You hear what I'm saying? My job. My check. My bank account is what provides for me. Seeing God as your provider will change your entire life. Obviously, this person, and he dressed in purple and fine linen, gay, gaily living in splendor every single day. And a certain poor man named Lazarus was laid at his gate, covered with sores, and longing to be fed with the crumbs which are falling from the rich man's table. Beside, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now it came about that the poor man died, and he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades he lifted up his eyes. From the grave 
And look what Christ gave us an example of. See, I'm, this story is told by Christ. Amen. In Torah, man. I want to share something with you. You need to pay attention to get the wax out of your ears and you tune it up. You don't want to see nobody go to hell. You don't want to have a, even a smidgen of a doubt. Because this torment don't change. Let me tell you something. It doesn't matter if you got a name in hell. Torment is torment. Amen. You don't they torment don't call your name. Amen. I tell people you ain't got no family there. You ain't got no body there. Just just like heaven. Except for heaven is rejoicing. You ain't word, you ain't going to heaven to see mama. Amen. You still think you're gonna see mama, you miss it. you you just you just might stay in the grave. Amen. I'm going to heaven to see Jesus. Yeah, face to face. Amen. I'm told you I'm going to see satisfaction. Guaranteed. Amen. Are oh, you listening to me today? I mean, it's just a change of frame of mind. You ain't going to see no husband, no marriage in heaven. Amen. We're as the angels. That's right. Amen. Now you will have a semblance of who everybody is, but the that role is perfect. Yeah. Now I want to share something about it. Watch this. And saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried out and said, "Father Abraham, have mercy on me." And send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue. Now here he is. As a role reversal. <clears throat> Lazarus was just hoping to get a crumb from his table. Yeah. While he was living. Amen. I asked y'all to pray over these envelopes. Some of y'all you be when well, we're gonna stop, we're never gonna stop. Amen. But you don't even grab them no more. Some of you just come to church a minute, two minutes after, minute and thirty minutes after. You ain't got time to do no praying. Amen. You're not serious about life. Church starts at, at quarter to ten. If you're here at ten, then you're late. If you used to open the church at ten, you already done missed prayer. You done missed the warming of the presence of God. You're just doing what you're supposed to do. We don't have no urgency. Just send him now. Send him to give me a cool so that we know some things. See, I got a message that I haven't released. Don't go to hell. I wrote it in 2012. I never released it. But I'm not going into that today. I just want you to understand something. That this man never saw God as his provider. Amen. He had all the world's goods. I'm sure he sent donations out every now and then to look good in the community. Amen. And to do things. Where Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life, everybody say life, right. you receive your good things. Let me share something with you. God provides for the good, evil, and the good. It's what you do with it, how you use it. Look what he said. And likewise, Lazarus had bad things. It looked like Lazarus had a bad part of life. And likewise, Lazarus bad thing, but now he is comforted here and you are in agony. You can say this, it's up to them that they get saved. No, it's up to you. How can they hear unless a preacher preach? He ain't talking about your 30 minutes in the pulpit, but every day of your life. Amen. You're a tree of life if you want to be. You bring healing to the nations. But I want you to see where's your life at now?
Turn with me to 2 Corinthians. Chapter 9 and verse 10 because God provides something that you can't get away from and I, I, and, and I, I, I'm, I know you might get, get tired of me talking about it, but um, you know, I don't care what's, I don't care if it's a thousand members, 50 or five. The word is the word. But how did God provide? God did you think that God provided your car? You get excited over a car. You get excited over a house. You get excited over clothes. You know what God provides? Simple as this. The only thing that God provides is seed. I never get away from this in the Word of God and in, in, in our ministry and Christian. And, 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 and God always, see, God don't have to call it anything. He don't have to call it then he just simply called it what he wanted to call it, seed. Did you know the scripture said there's a seed time and a harvest time? Now, here's the thing. I want you to see that God can't lie. That God, you need to start taking this for his word. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10. Are you ready? Are you there yet? Yes. And it says, he says in verse 10, now he who supplies what? Seed. Let me show what it said. He who provides seed. Can you listen to me? You don't get it yet because nobody's getting excited. Amen. You don't get excited when your light has been reduced down to a mite. Amen. You know what a mite is? No. It's amazing. See, when you when you have that you don't believe the curse. Because Satan told you a lie. God is with me. But I'll tell you what the scripture said. God is with those who are with him. Amen. I can give you a brand new car. New to you. Better than what you had. And in six months, you look like you come out of the Baja. Tires flat. Because you ain't changed no oil, you ain't put nothing, you ain't did, you ain't even put gas in it. You put a quart, a, a, a dollar's worth. The carburetor and the, and the ignitions, the igniters are waiting for some gas. You ain't put no battery. You're walking around with a battery charge. I'm talking to you today. You live like you're down to a mile. And you can call yourself blessed. You never learn about a system. Some of you come up and you give your you give a tithe and things regularly, but there's no harvest. Why? Because you thought that was it. But you weren't looking for God for the other thing. God is the one to provide you see. Not your job. When I lift that offering up, you hear I pray. It came from many sources, but now it's one. What do you think? I, I didn't make this stuff up. Holy Spirit. Look what it said. And I wish everybody was here. Look what it said. In, in, in 2 Corinthians 9, and verse 10, it said, He who supplies seed to the hope. So, so. But that's where you are. You're okay sometimes sowing it to the church. But what about other parts of your life? You made commitments that you don't fulfill. You didn't think that was going to hurt you. Things get repossessed. You fall behind. You don't pay your bills on time. You, 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 you ain't sowing. Amen. You're keeping. Amen. You're messing with your hearts. You do stuff that you can't afford and you, you pay for it later called Christmas. 
Your tithes and offerings shouldn't die during the holiday. Amen. When they do, you live in flight diabetes. You don't see God as your provider. I want you to understand something that, that, that the Bible said, he who supplied seed to who? The sower. Uh, I'm talking to sowers. You know what a sower is? One that sees God as his provider. You should, you've been in this thing for, for 30 plus years, 25 years with me, and the Spirit of God. Now listen to me. And you haven't got beyond a mic. You're still wondering how we're going to make it a month? Some of you eat beans because you think it's good. No, you eat beans because that's all you can eat. Amen. Organic or not, every bean I've seen is organic. Amen. You can't grow no beans. They ain't selling you the beans that they grow on the space shuttle. Amen. Buy beans, make, 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 make a meal for you. Look what he said. And bread for food. God wants you to be nourished. Amen. Listen to me. If you see him as your provider, he guarantees you, I'm going to provide food. Amen. Bread for your food. You don't have to worry about that. Only thing you have to do is give thanks. But look at this other part. I say this every time I lift the offer, nobody ever ever caught it. 25 years. You, you should stop what you're doing and shout hallelujah. Amen. I say these words. But you don't get it because you're not a sower. You don't see God as your provider. I say these words. And multiply our future so. Amen. You should got excited because you should know that it's harvest time. Amen. Watch this. Look what it said. We'll supply. They, these are power words. Did he say will? Yes. Supply. Supply and multiply. And multiply. Amen. What are you going to multiply? Your seed. Your seed. Amen. God ain't. ain't if you think you God deals with the seed. Yes. What you do with the seed, even God want to be in that. Yes. It's called when you see him as your body, you meet with him first and ask him. Amen. Amen. I was doing a deal for my book yesterday. He called me. To, I mean, they did it quick. I'm like, man, I wasn't ready. I'm ready to take a break. And the next thing can cost a lot. But I told the guy, I said, I, I, I need the best price. I said, it's my third book. He said, somebody knew. I said, let me tell you. But I'm, I, I'm, I'm a soul. We come back. I say, it's a lot of money. But I did not God did. Amen. Praise God. Amen. See, I'm talking to you because you're, you are not, you should be at that harvesting point. Let me tell you about the harvest. I want you to see what it said. And provide seed. That harvest is about multiplying. Yeah. You get more than what you sow every harvest. Amen. But here's what happens. You all are coming, you come into it every time. You come into you don't ever have harvest time because you have already allocated your harvest. Yeah. Amen. It's called death. Amen. Living outside of me. You know how y'all are. You done ate 
ate up his seed or misused it. And when you misuse somebody's seed, they look like a skeleton. Amen. And the skeleton come walking up to his wife and saying, what about, where's your seed? And you both are skeletons. But let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the way you look right now. You look like diabetes. You got nice shoes, nice clothes. But inside, you're full of dead men bones. You shouldn't be struggling when you're a sower. If you see God as your provider. You're not looking at God and saying, I make sacrifice for you. Amen. You should say thank you. He's the one to provide the seed. Yes. Amen. He's the one to provide the seed. He's the one to provide the seed. Amen. He's the one that gave me bread to eat. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And if you understood so, I'm going to show you something. This has always been with us. That multiplication would have happened and you would be. Listen, I'm living in the harvest. I retired to do God's work. He had need of me. But it wouldn't have happened if I didn't put it up for the harvest. Amen. I'm not on Social Security. Hello. Amen. I'm talking to you today. I'm saying to you, where's your harvest? Maybe you never saw God as your provider. Watch this. Supply and multiply your seed. Listen to me. He didn't say multiply your seed to go out and do what you want to do with it. Amen. What did he say? For a future song. And, and, and he said, and multiply your seed for what? And and, and, and and for sowing, first you got to continue to sow. Listen to me. You will not continue to sow if you don't see God as your provider. Amen. I mean, with that book, when I look at it, and, and, and I mean, this is just a example. You don't, you, you can go find any other church you want to go to. And, and they'll promote you to hell. Because God is watching you, every one of us. God is watching your whole world. He watched diabetes. He watched Lazarus. Amen. He knows those who he is. Whatever you do, he knows the seed he gave to you. What you gonna do with it? Amen. How you gonna how attitude you gonna have when you do get? It. Look what he said. It increases you. You shouldn't be first looking at how much you got in the bank, how much you got in this. You should be thinking about, man, it's a great opportunity to sow again. Amen. Very few ministries get this, people. If you was in charge, these uncle folks wouldn't be here. You'd be paying yourself. Look up at it. Amen. 
of good farmers living on what? Last year, harvest. In hope for a better harvest this year. Amen. That's how you should live. You should not be living paycheck, paycheck, day to day, and wondering how we're going to make it. And then look at God like, I'm obeying you, God. But you ain't banning with the whole seed. Amen. Somewhere, something ain't jiving. Where's the increase in harvest? I'm going to share something with you. You get it right tonight. Just don't have a heart like Esau. Didn't understand the promises of God. He didn't think that it was working. And it's going to work for him. I'm firstborn. I'm always going to be firstborn. I'm a Christian. I'm always going to be a Christian. I'm a tithe. I'm always. But you have. No. You don't see God as your provider. It says to Esau, have the repentance. He didn't have a change of heart. You know what he did? He did the same thing again. I've been saying the same thing to the people, to you on television, to you sitting here for 25 years, nobody listening, they just do the same thing. I made it a year. You didn't pay 25 things. You didn't do that. You all you've done is change money. You just took your seed. So you shifted it. I'm trying to tell you something. God is the one that provides. If you don't make a little sacrifice and give up some things, guess what you're gonna do? You just give him what's rich. Give your life. Watch what God do with your life. He can greatly multiply. We should be living in the harvest. Amen. I want you to see this is New Testament scripture. Amen. Yeah. But you're going to see God this year. Are you going to see that you're not in God? But look what it said. The harvest of your righteousness. You know, that's very powerful. You know what that means? You're going to do the right thing. You're going to do the right thing with the seed. So do you agree with me that God provides seed? Yeah. Amen. Harvest isn't for today, but for a future time. Most have eaten or spent their harvest before it's even so ever sown. The world does this. You know how the world do this? By charging interest and penalty. Take your seed and you go and the world say 18% and some of y'all say that's good and if you really need it, it say 30% and you still sign. What's that 30% coming from? Your future seed. All these years you've been under the curse. You know what the curse is? You shall live by the sweat of your brow. Curse should be the ground that you walk on. It won't produce for you a harvest. Because you didn't value the seed. You didn't see God as your provider. You know why I'm still single? 
mostly because I'm a tithe. In all my years, I, I, I do I go out and I and I pay attention. I met very I met no one that gives to God first. I want to ask you, are you delighting in your giving to God? I mean, to when you give, do you are you are you just eating your bread to die? The principle the woman sold to the prophet life. God kept to his word right there and increased her. Amen. So you can change. Okay, let's read it from the Amplified. And in the Amplified Classic Version, it says, Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide. Everybody say, will provide. Will provide. And multiply. And multiply. See, you can't understand this. God don't just provide. Amen. He multiplies. <clears throat> you shouldn't be having arguments at home over seed. When you have an arguments at home over seed, it's because there's no multiplication. Amen. Something wrong with the harvest. Look what he said. Multiply your seed for sowing. Again, the multiply again for sowing. Amen. That is your resources. It's your resources. And increase the harvest of your righteousness, which shows itself in active goodness, kindness, and love. Amen. I want to let you know something today. God's system works. When you aren't even when you're not working. When you're not working with God, God still provide. Amen. I want you to understand the fullness of God that when you were born, whenever you can, God put everything in the earth, everything in you. It's like that apple that Sunday. The fullness of all you ever need. You should not be worried about it. some of you saying, if I had it, what you had. No, you couldn't have what I had because you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to school. You wouldn't have took a loan now for education. You wouldn't have bought a Camaro like many of my friends did. I'm in school. They got pickups and Camaros. And I'm walking with backpack full of books and and I wasn't even saved in it, and the devil still talked to me. <laughs> uh, they had girlfriends. I couldn't get one. Who gonna go out with somebody that took a poverty vow? I asked one young lady out when I was in school. I said, let's I, let's go out and eat some fish on Friday. I said, um, she said, how are we going? I said, we're gonna walk. I, I didn't, she didn't, she didn't answer my call. I did take somebody and they, they didn't want to be seen walking with me, so they, they walked 30 paces back. <laughs> Sacrifices you make. I'm talking to you tonight because you continue to wait, and I'm talking to you. Drop the will of life. It won't be because that's no life. This will be all you have. It won't return back to you. Look what he said. And it's God's aim is not only to provide, but to multiply. Turn me to Leviticus chapter 27, real quick, in verse 30. Hurry up. 
Let your fingers do the walking, let the Bible do the talk. I, I, I wish everybody was here because, see, why do we talk about this thing? You know what God calls it? What do you call it? What I just been talking about? Harvest. Talk, he calls it seed. He didn't call it, but he called it seed. The seed is very important to God. Turn to Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. It says, does all the tithe of the land. He's talking about the seed. Amen? Amen. Whatever you sown, all that come out of the land, of the seed. I, I, I just blew my mind. This I got this this morning. After early, after two days of counsel, I want you to see that what he said. All the tide of the land, of the sea, of the land, of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. That seed that God provided ain't all yours. Did you know after you pay your tithes, if you're paying tithes and offering, the rest of the seed ain't yours either. It's for what? Sowing. You know how you sow? If you come to God, God will say this. Put it up. Let it draw a little interest. Amen. I'm talking to you. I personally know some of you. Amen. You couldn't even let equity rise up in your toe before you put it up for hawk. I put my toe up. And if I don't pay it back, you can have my toe. That's a bad way to be, folks. You reduce your life to a mind. Who where you learn that kind of economics from? You didn't learn from God. Look what God said. If you listen to God, he said, I'm going to what? Multiply. Provide and multiply. Provide and multiply. Can you see God? See, some of y'all can't see God this way. Amen. You saw your way, but you didn't see God's way in your life. Amen. Are you going to change? Oh, well, I'm too old now. You know what Esau did? When he found out he didn't get the blessing. Now Esau, if he repented, he could have just... He said, Father, what about me? He said, I, I, I don't have one blessing. Amen. Now he couldn't have had the birthright and the blessing of it, but he could have been blessed if he saw God. You know what he did? He went out to Ishmael, married one or two of his daughters. I mean, he's still moving by the flesh. After the night and after all these messages you've heard, you walk out of the presence of God and do, you cut a deal with the world, with your flesh. You ain't repenting. You ain't had supplication. And do you know in the Bible, you don't hear nothing else about Esau. But you hear about Jacob. You don't hear anything about Ishmael. But you hear about Isaac. God deal with seeds. You have to see the promise. But you don't know it. You don't believe it. You can't see God in your provision. Harvest time revival. Nobody come prepared for harvest. It's always a struggle in your sense. 
you're making a sacrifice when you should be giving out of multiplication. God pours out a powerful word. There could be no more powerful word than what was given Sunday. You will serve communion. <coughs> that word that, that God gave in the blood and the wine and the bread. Amen. The bread to the eater. Amen. Did you know that bread can heal you? Did you know that bread keep you in the right mind? Amen. You know that bread can stand your life. I'm gonna share something with you. Amen. You should never ever walk in hopelessness. Amen. When you have the God of hope. You know what the God of hope is? He killed anything impossible. Amen. When he rose again. Yes. Amen. Because he finished all death. Yes. Only as long as death exists, you got impossibilities. Exactly. But when Amen. death don't exist, you have no possible impossible. There's nothing Amen. impossible Amen. for those who believe. Amen. But you didn't care. You go out and treat your birthright and your blessing like the rich man dies. Watch what he said in Leviticus. Are you ready? Leviticus. 27:30. Is that in y'all's Bible? Yes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. And it said, It is holy to the Lord. But if you want to keep some of it, see, I don't really have an issue. But here's the key. We're in the body of Christ. The way you act, there's other folks in the total body like that. Amen. We're a whole body. Amen. We ain't pieces. Amen. But not everybody is going to walk in the, the harvest of righteousness. Amen. You're doing your own thing. And the thing about it, you get somebody to agree with you. Yes. Usually your spouse. Amen. Watch this. Verse 31. If therefore a man wishes to redeem part of the tithe, he shall add to it one fill of it. You do the math. For every tenth part of a herd, flock, whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. God is serious about that. Now watch this. Turn to Leviticus 26. And verse 1, he said, You shall not make for yourself idols, nor shall you set up for yourself image of sacred pillars, nor shall you place a figure stone in your land to bow down to it. You might not think you bow down. You say, I only bow down to the Lord Jesus. Let, 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 let your debt talk to you. You'll be bowing down to it, making up a lie on the phone. Okay. Amen. But I'll pay you next week, line. Just to get off your back. But you don't have to worry about that. We just see God as a provider. Amen. You know, I decided to preach the truth. I'm not concerned about what people put in and take out, but don't change the gospel. Amen. I didn't sign on to worry. Some of you, you can't wait to get on your back. You lay on your back, 
resting all the time. You ain't still got no rest. We're going to lay you on your back one day in the castle. You're going to be at peace. Because you're worrying all the time. As you think time will take care of it, don't take care of it. Because sowing takes care of it. Doing what God has said. But now listen, that sowing is not about just get once you give it, give it to God, God wants it to multiply you. He tells you what to do with the rest. Amen. He tells you how to manage. sowing time. Did y'all get that? Yes. You won't. You have, you're living on last year's harvest Amen. until it's time to sow again. Amen. You'll never run out. Man, you need the counsel of God. Amen. Yes. Look what he said again in verse number five. You will 